Welcome back to Stratagames, I'm Jason, and today on Simple Strategy we're looking at the two-player game Hive. Hive is a lot like chess. The game is 100% strategy with no luck or variables to account for other than your opponent's decisions. Like chess, you also have a game piece of yours that you're trying to protect while attempting to capture your opponents. First, we'll walk through a couple general strategies before talking about each piece individually. In my opinion, the most important thing to understand about Hive is that unlike most other strategy games, it pays to be reactive as opposed to proactive. Whenever my opponent places or moves a piece, I often like to move one of my pieces onto theirs in a way that prevents it from moving on a future turn. This allows me to have access to that piece when I want it, but prevents my opponent from using it when they want to. Similarly, if there's ever a complete circuit in the hive, it can be good to break it by removing one of your pieces, locking down the majority of your opponent's pieces in that loop, while letting you have at least one free piece from it. Now let's walk through the qualities and strategies of each game piece. The queen bee is not very useful, but it's obviously the most important piece in the game. It can only move one space at a time, making it difficult to protect sometimes. Often the best way to protect your queen bee is by forcing your opponent to defend their own queen rather than attack yours. Since this piece is crucial, but has weak movement, I would only give it a B. The beetle can also only move one space at a time, making it slow, but it's versatile because of the ability to move on top of the hive. The beetles can definitely be good at locking down your opponent's good pieces and preventing them from summoning more but its sluggish nature makes me like these mainly for longer games or as throwaway starting pieces, since you know they won't be able to move most games anyway. I would consider the soldier ants the best pieces of the game, since they're nearly unrestricted in where they can move to. If I can spare the turn, I like to summon an ant just to wait around until I really want to lock down a piece on the other side of the board. These are definitely not pieces to waste, but with three of them, you'll feel like you never run out. Grasshoppers can either be almost as good as soldier ants, or they can be nearly useless, depending on how the hive forms. In a game where the board is made long and narrow, grasshoppers can cross the entire board in one jump, but in a game with lots of turns and holes, sometimes I avoid using them at all. The spiders are the epitome of average. They move at a decent pace, but don't have any way to cross the hive and have to move exactly three spaces, which can sometimes be clunky. They mimic soldier ants, but this imitation is in no way flattering. That's all for the base game, but Hive has three expansions that each add one additional piece for each player. The ladybug, the mosquito, and the pill bug, and we'll run through those now. The ladybug moves exactly three spaces, like the spider, but it has to move two spaces on top of the hive and then one down to the table. Being able to cross the hive makes the ladybug much better than the spider. Even though being forced to crawl on the hive can be a little awkward sometimes, the majority of the time this allows you to get to a space you really want to, and at worst, the ladybug can usually end up exactly where a spider would. The mosquito can take on the movement of any bug it touches at the beginning of your turn, making it versatile and an extra copy of one of your better pieces, but it can also be unreliable. It might end up next to a piece that can't move very well, and your opponent can even move pieces away from your mosquito specifically to limit your options. The pill bug moves like the queen bee, one space at a time, but also has a special ability to move an adjacent bug up onto it, then down to an empty space around it. This piece is slow, making it difficult to work perfectly, but its ability can be extremely helpful. By moving and neutralizing one of your opponent's pieces for a turn, or by forcing your opponent to break a link, locking down several pieces at once. You've just leveled up. Thanks for watching Simple Strategy. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe.